two killed in seven vehicle crash. Petrol companies encouraged to reduce retail price. Hello and good afternoon. I'm Amin Carlos and welcome to News on 2. Well, two people, including a boy, were killed while 12 others were injured in an accident involving seven vehicles at kilometer 317 of the North South Expressway near Tapa last night. Well, the accident involved two trailer lorries, a lorry, a Mitsubishi Pajero, a Parodwa Axia, a Parodwa Maivi, and a Honda Accord. The 41 year old lorry driver has been detained for further investigation under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. Well, a Perak Fire and Rescue Department spokesman said the accident happened at about 10.50 p.m. before they received a distress call dispatching an emergency team from Taba Fire and Rescue Department to the location. In a statement issued after the operation ended at 1.50 a.m. today, well, he said there were 14 victims altogether. The dead had been identified as Salwati Yakob, who was the front passenger of the Maivi, and Be Ziu Zong, a five-year-old old boy who was seated in the back of the Pajero. The body of the victims was sent to the police for further action whilst the rest of the victims were brought to Tapa Hospital for further treatment. Well, the early voting for the Tanjong Piai parliamentary by-election was completed yesterday with almost 100% turnout of the 280 80 early voters. Now, Election Commission or EC records show that 91% of the early voter had cast their votes at two polling channels at the Perke building at Pontian Police Headquarters. Now, the polling channel for 21 voters in Pakandana's state constituency was closed at 1 p.m., while the polling channel for 259 voters in Kokop was closed at 5 p.m. The voting process was being conducted under the watchful eyes of EC observers and agents of the candidates. And all the boxes containing the ballots would be capped at the Pontian Police Station lockup before being taken to the vote tallying center at the Dewan Jubilee in Tan Sultan Ibrahim for counting after the completion of the polling process on 16th November. The early voters for the Tanjong Piai by election comprised 210 police officers and personnel in Kukup, 18 in Pakandanas, 38 serving outside the constituency and 14 others who have retired from the service. Now, police have called on political party supporters to avoid creating any provocation throughout the Tanjong Piai by-election campaign period. Now, Pontian Police Chief Superintendent Mustafa Bakri also reminds all supporters to not cause any provocation to any quarters. So far, kita tengok uh, uh, campaign tu dari dua bulan sampai semalam lah, berjalan dengan lancar lah. Uh, ada insiden-insiden yang terpencil itu lah tu kita dapat atasi. So kita berharap uh, penyokong-penyokong lah, ataupun parti-parti yang terlibat di dalam uh, PRK 165 Tanjung Piai ni dapat uh, mengawal emosi dan kita tengok penghujung uh, untuk uh, apa ni tempoh mengundi ni akan berlaku juga provokasi dan sebagainya. The Tanjong Piai constituency has 52,986 voters, consists of 52,698 regular voters, 280 early voter and 8 voters who are unable to vote as they are in foreign countries. All parties and candidates contesting in the Tanjung Pai parliamentary by-election are reminded to get a police permit to conduct house-to-house -house visits as they too are considered as a form of campaigning. Election Commission EC Chairman Dato Azhar Azizan Harun said, in addition, the walkabout program, which is also considered as a mobile election campaign, must have a clear time frame and location for monitoring purposes. 
Well, Dato Azhar in a statement said all parties or candidates involved were reminded to comply with all regulations stipulated for campaigning, particularly involving permit application. Well, he also said campaign materials which were seditious and provocative in nature and did not have the name and address of the printers would be brought down, adding appropriate action would also be taken regarding party flags hung on vehicles that cause danger to members of the public. While the EC would make public the information concerning election offenses as well as statistics on the number of reports made to the police and the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission or MACC on its Facebook, Twitter and websites every day throughout the by-election period. The Election Commission EC has recorded 90 election offenses committed during the Tanjung Piai parliamentary by-election. Well, among them were putting up banners in the wrong places and failing to display the printer's name on the campaign materials were dealt by election campaign enforcement officers. EC Deputy Chairman Dr. Azmi Sharom said the police had received 31 reports related to issues brought up during the by-election campaign. He also added that three complaints were reported to the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, regarding the handing out of free SIM cards and the 1,000 ringgit cash aid to fishermen. Well, our advice is, if you have something that is not true, make a police report or make a report to SPRM and if it goes to court, the court will decide. And kita, it is good if the court decides. Then kita pun, we have a guideline what is right and what is wrong. Dr. Azmi was met after visiting the polling center for early voting at the Perke Building, Pontian Police Headquarters. Well, the Water, Land and Natural Resources Ministry is set to amend two acts to empower the ministry's authority as well as doubling the penalty for illegal poachers in the country. Its minister, Dr. Xavier Jayakuma, explains the National Forestry Act 1984 and the Wildlife Conservation Act 2010 will be tabled at the parliament next year in March. Dr. Xavier also said a discussion is being held with the Malaysian Armed Force in efforts to protect the endangered species in the forest. Saya telah hubungi uh, uh, Panglima uh, Angk 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 Angkatan Tentera dan sekarang kita di dalam uh, satu perbincangan di mana uh, kita boleh gunakan uh, angkat Angkatan Tentera di dalam uh, hutan tetapi kita kena adakan kelulusan dari uh, Kabinet untuk demikian. The population of the Malayan tigers in the country now is less than 200 and they are expected to be extinct in the next 10 years unless proactive measures are taken. Dr. Xavier was speaking at the Save Malaysian Tigers campaign in Sepang. The campaign is part of the preservation efforts to save the declining population of tigers in Malaysia. In conjunction with World Pneumonia Day, parents are advised to get their children vaccinated to protect them from various illnesses. Well, children as young as five years old and below are at the risk of having pneumonia. Therefore, taking pneumococcal vaccination will help to prevent pneumococcal disease. Consultant pediatrician and neonatologist Dato Dr. Musa Mohamad Nordin said an allocation of 60 million ringgit for a pneumococcal vaccine will be included into the National Immunization Program, NIP, that has also been stated during the Budget 2020 announcement. Budget yang telah meletakkan pneumococcal di dalam program imunisasi kebangsaan ini adalah suatu tindakan yang amat baik, ya. It is a gift to our children. Yeah? Kerana pneumococcus adalah jangkitan yang paling banyak menyebabkan kematian daripada radang paru-paru. Jadi munasabah kita meletakkan vaksin konjugit pneumococcal di dalam program imunasi kebangsaan kerana ia akan mencegah kanak-kanak ini daripada dijangkiti penyakit pneumococcal yang boleh menyebabkan kematian dan juga sakit daripada jangkitan kuman di dalam paru-paru mereka. 
That's what Dr. Musa said this after attending the launching of Vaccine for Life ceremony at the federal capital. Pneumonia is a respiratory disease, occurs when a bacteria, virus or fungus attacks that causes infection to the lungs and has become one of the leading causes of deaths in children under five years old. And if you've just joined us, welcome to News on 2. Now, petroleum products can be retailed below the government's stipulated prices as competition among petroleum companies. Domestic Trade Consumer Affairs Minister Dato Sri Saifuddin Nasishon Ismail said, at the moment, all 3,500 petrol stations of the six main industry players are selling petroleum products according to the Automatic Pricing Mechanism, or APM, which is 2 ringgit and 8 cent per liter for RON 95 petrol. Jadi kalau core business dia itu dia bagi tumpuan kepada aspek persaingan iaitu tingkatkan inovasi, tingkatkan kecekapan, dia sudah tentu boleh uh, untuk membantu mengurangkan harga. Di sebalik kerajaan menggunakan APM dan meletakkan harga RM2.8 dan kerajaan telah memainkan peranan untuk tidak membebankan pengguna dengan cara memberikan subsidi. He was met after attending a symposium on fair competition and cost of living in Pochajaya. Dr. Sri Saifuddin added the government was also prepared to provide support, including giving certain benefits for petroleum companies, taking part in reducing their prices. Anti-competitive practices such as cartels and monopolies must be dealt to ensure a sustainable economic growth of the country. Well, Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail said such practices contributed to the distortion of the market that was supposed to compete in a healthy and competitive manner. Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza said one of the examples of such business practices was when those who monopolized the market had collectively determined prices that were way much higher than manufacturing cost to gain maximum profit. Persaingan dalam pasaran juga boleh terjejas oleh tindakan anti persaingan monopoli dan perusahaan yang secara bersendiri ataupun bergabung dengan perusahaan lain mendominasi pasaran. Tindakan seperti ini dianggap sebagai penyalahgunaan kedudukan dominan. Antara amalan persaingan lain yang tidak sihat ialah penyalahgunaan kedudukan dominan sesebuah perusahaan yang menyebabkan terkesannya perusahaan lain yang terpaksa memberhentikan operasi kerana tidak dapat bersaing ataupun terus terkeluar daripada pasaran. The Deputy Prime Minister was speaking at the Fair Competition and Cost of Living Symposium in Putrajaya. She also said a fair competition will protect the rakyat as it will ensure high-quality products and services being offered at affordable prices with plenty of choices. As such, she said the enforcement of the Competition Act 2010 was important towards the establishment of a competitive and healthy market by protecting the competition process in the interests of consumers, businesses and economy. Well, now, the Joho government is ready to act as a mediator between the federal government and Singapore for the negotiations pertaining to the 1962 Water Agreement. And Joho Menteri Besar, Dato Dr. Shahruddin Jamal, said the Johor government could assist in view of the good relations between Johor and Singapore. Kerajaan negeri uh, bersedia untuk membantu ataupun menjadi orang tengah antara federal dan kerajaan Singapura. Hmm. InsyaAllah atas hubungan yang baik antara kerajaan persekutuan negeri Johor dan Singapura isu-isu uh, sebegini kita dapat selesaikan dengan cara berhemahlah. He was commenting on Land and Natural Resources Minister Dr. Dr. Xavier Jayakumar's statement that Malaysia has the right to revise raw water price to Singapore. Dr. Dr. Shahruddin said the state government sees it as a positive development to Johor and hope the agreement will help the state to increase its revenue. He was met after a special interview on the state budget 2020 with RTM at the Sultan Iskandar Information and Broadcasting Complex.
Education and human capital are among the main focuses of the Johor government in the state 2020 budget, will be, which will be tabled at the Johor State Legislative Assembly on 21st November. So, Menteri Basar, Dr. Dr. Shahruddin Jamal said 5,678 inputs had been received from 2,572 respondents, and both education and human capital were among the main concerns raised by the people in the state. He said the upcoming state budget is considered as a balanced budget with over 65% improvement of its focal point. He added that various grants and incentives would be provided by the state government to various sectors of society in efforts to help the people to live more comfortably. Saya juga sedar ada kegangan daripada hasil kerajaan negeri yang terhad. Kerajaan negeri akan bekerjasama dengan program pihak antara kerajaan persatuan dan pihak swasta di dalam melaksanakan Inisiatif, inisiatif, inilah insya Allah. Dan ah, biasalah, akan ditunggu-tunggu. Ada juga, ada juga berita baik. Ada, ada juga berita baik dan buat tangan saya lah kepada rakyat di bandar maupun di kawasan luar bandar, terutama golongan B40, petani, nelayan, usahawan, wanita. Earlier, Dr. Dr. Shahruddin appeared in a special interview on the Selexi Conti radio program produced by RTM in conjunction with pre-Johor 2020 budget at the Sultan Iskandar Information and Broadcasting Complex. He said the state government would also empower the agricultural sector through the ideas of the Green Revolution that would optimize agricultural land use, improve infrastructure in agricultural areas, and encourage the use of modern technology. The Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia, CAAM, is confident of regaining its Category 1 under the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration's or FAA ranking for air safety within 12 to 24 months. Now, the U.S. FAA has downgraded Malaysia's air safety rating due to its shortcomings as an aviation regulator after an FAA review on CAAM was carried out in April 2019. Well, Malaysia has held a Category 1 rating since 2003. In a media conference, CAAM board member Afzal Abdul Rahim said CAAM had admitted that there were shortcomings and will make improvements constructively as well as serious changes in its structure and operations. We are willing to take the difficult decisions that are needed for us to reorganize, re-strategize and re-resource to meet um, our obligations in retaining our Category 1 space. He added CAAM is trying to get the FAA to reassess the outstanding matters once the regulator is ready. Meanwhile, Afzal said CAAM had to answer 300 questions during the FAA's review of its aviation oversight system, adding that, however, the FAA raised 33 outstanding issues that CAAM needed to address. On the contrary, he said from CAAM's perspective, it identified only 22 outstanding issues instead of 33. Afzal asserted that the FAA downgrade was only on CAAM's role as an aviation regulator and this has no effect on airlines, airports or air traffic services under its purview. Well, on the same subject, Malaysian carriers, including Malaysia Airlines, will have their operations and code shares to and from the United States limited to the existing levels following the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration's FAA downgrade of the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia's or CAAM rating from Category 1 to Category 2. Now, Malaysia Airlines in its statement said this may affect its existing code shares to or from the U.S. with several partner airlines subject to their respective airlines' own assessment or consideration. Now, the state-owned carriers' passengers currently fly to the U.S. through the One World Partners. Now, Malaysia Airlines noted that it maintains the highest safety standards as certified by International Air Transportation Association, or IATA, Operational Safety Audit, which has been continuously and successfully recertified since 2005. Now, the airline also holds the European Union Aviation Safety Agency and FAA maintenance organization approvals. Now, CAAM announced late Monday that the FAA has listed it as a Category 2 aviation regulator as of Monday. Now, this followed an FAA review of CAAM that was carried out in April 2019. 
Well, in our, one of our headlines, Malaysians are increasingly conscious and deliberate about their smartphone research, with a recent survey by Google and Epsos highlighting that 46% of them fell under the, quote, avid or avid researcher consumer profile. Now, Google Malaysia industry head up for tech and telco Suan Lim said this is due to the innovation in the smartphone industry and higher access to information. So we always used to feel that um, uh, price points and promotions for what suit Malaysians the most, but we actually find that now battery life is the most important smartphone factor when it comes to how Malaysians choose to buy their next smartphone. She said Malaysians in the market for a smartphone would perform many research actions before purchasing, such as reading smartphone reviews, physically going to a store, comparing prices online, and watching smartphone review videos. Meanwhile, Lim said rural consumers are increasingly empowered by the rise of e-commerce as it helped give broader choices to this segment, resulting in more rural consumers now buying smartphones online compared with urban consumers. The study also also found that while the majority of Malaysians hold on to their smartphones for longer than two years, one in two Malaysians aspire to change their phones in under two years. Epsos is a global market research and consulting firm headquartered in Paris, France. And that concludes this afternoon's news on two. Well, our top story, two killed in seven vehicle crash near Tapa. Do join us again at seven this evening. I'm Amin Carlos. Thanks for watching.